Alice in Borderland got to be one of the best survival game shows thus far, and season two might not be the end of it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I tend to get very nervous when shows, anime, animated series come out with multiple seasons. That's just asking for trouble sometimes, because to me, sometimes the later seasons might not be up to par. Tokyo Ghoul and Promise Neverland are just two examples of this. However, I am proud to say that Alice in Borderland is definitely not one of those cases. One of the things that made Alice in Borderland so interesting was the whole plot behind it and then having these regular people come together to try and survive these basically messed up games. If I had to sum up Alice in Borderland in a few words, I would basically describe it as an isekai gone wrong. In this unfamiliar and foreign world that they were transported to, which is basically what an isekai is, these games were games I seriously wouldn't want any part of. I mean, especially considering that there were characters that arrived with friends, specifically our MC. But those friends did not make it out of the game, and that was a brutal sight to see. That game absolutely destroyed him, which one would expect. I mean, let's face it, all of the games were brutal because they are still survival games at the end of the day, but the games in Season 2 didn't quite hit as hard as the Seven of Hearts games in Season 1. I don't think any game will compare to the hell that particular game caused. Then again, we also have to take in consideration that in Season 1, we simply didn't know what was going to happen and things got pretty dark real fast. Whereas in Season 2, we kind of already knew what to expect to a degree. So let's do a comparison after we get some of the basic information out of the way. Alright, so let's get into some basic information about the games. Now, the games are categorized by suits. Hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs. I mean, just based off that, it doesn't sound that bad, but the meaning behind the suits is what makes it so bad. For example, the hearts games. The hearts games usually involve some amount of psychology. These are games of trust and betrayal. In other words, these are games that will mess you up mentally and emotionally. Then we have games under the spades suit. These games are physical. So these are games of endurance, games of strength, and agility. For people that go to the gym or work out a lot, this is perfect. For people that don't, like myself, this might be my worst enemy. Next, we have games under the diamond suits. These are games of wits, games of intelligence, games of strategy. Now, it might not sound like that big of a deal, but when you're in the environment of you're trying to survive, you're competing with other people, I think that's a bit scary and would make this a hard category. Especially for me, because when I was in college and when I was in school and I would take tests and exams, I was the one that would overthink on every single question and second guess my answers. So this is a category that I feel like I would genuinely struggle in because I am such a huge overthinker that it gets in the way sometimes. Lastly, we have games under the club suits. These are games with balance, games that kind of balance all three concepts with an element of teamwork. And some of you might be like, oh, that's not so bad. Teamwork, that sounds easy, but that's not the case. With teamwork, you gotta consider the type of individuals or people you have on your team. In this type of environment, and probably in real life too, you have to consider if they bring something of value to the team. If they bring no value whatsoever to the team, then they're kind of a liability. And they could end up doing more harm than good. At the end of the day, when it comes to a team, I feel like you have to be able to trust someone to be able to pull their own weight or trust someone to be able to do what you lack and vice versa. For example, a team where no one is good at endurance, strength, or agility, that's not really gonna help you with the physical aspect of this game, and that's not really a good team. But then let's say you have a member that's great at intelligent games and a member that's good at physical games, that's kind of a good balance, and I feel like that team would be more likely to succeed than a team that doesn't have much of anything going on or lacks that balance. Now, aside from that and how the games are organized and categorized, there is one more thing to keep in mind. The number of the card indicates the difficulty of the game. Like for example, a seven of hearts game is going to be more difficult than a two of hearts game, and so forth and so on. Shibuki-san! 
See you again! Okay, so let's get into season one. Season one is where you had that brutal game with the heads exploding, AKA officially called Seven of Hearts. This has got to be the most memorable game in the season or probably the most memorable game throughout Alice in Borderland, period. With this game, you had to be a wolf at the end of the time limit. Sounds simple enough until you realize that there can only be one wolf, AKA one survivor. And at this point, this particular friend group is basically in some deep trouble and the end result really surprised me. Like this was where I realized that this show was unpredictable and this moment officially solidified my interest in the show even more. Now part of me expected them to find some kind of way out of it, but they all got snuffed out except for our MC. To be blunt, I like dark things and I'm not too bothered if things don't have a happy ending all of the time, but I kind of always expect to see one. In my opinion, happy endings kind of make things less interesting and less enjoyable. I mean, what's the point of watching something if I know how it's going to go from beginning to end? I want to be surprised. I want to feel and be moved. I don't want to be able to mindlessly watch anything. So 8 out of 10, I tend to really like darker things or things that involve some sort of problem or tribulation that needs to be fixed. Something that's kind of going to show me some progression or development. And again, all of the games are pretty messed up, like every single one of them, and there's no debating that. But I really feel like we felt the weight of Alice in Borderland in season one. Like the consequences felt a lot heavier for our MC, and we saw how badly the aftermath of the Seven of Hearts destroyed him. Like our MC was plagued with guilt and all sorts of emotions, which are completely natural and normal things to go through. I'd be more concerned if he didn't feel anything after that. That'd be kind of weird. Then, there was also the Ten of Hearts game, where people were at the beach and they had to find out someone's executioner. Like, this was clearly some Castlevania stuff, like being burned alive in a fire is crazy. I'd rather be deleted by water personally, at least that's less painful. But I really feel like the games in Season 1 hit a lot more than the games in Season 2 because we saw the effect it had on our MC, and I don't feel like he went through that emotional trauma in Season 2. Okay, so in season two, the games don't seem as brutal as it was compared to the Seven of Hearts game in season one. And I say that because the MC isn't pit against other characters we genuinely care about or characters that are important to him. Like legit, all of the characters, at least the ones we care about, are pit against irrelevant people that we could kind of care less about. I mean, it would have been interesting to see our MC lose someone again, like maybe his love interest that he developed, or really see a lot of this particular group battle against each other. That's kind of really my only beef with season two. It didn't hit the same emotionally as season one did, and it kind of seemed like the stakes were a bit lower this time around. Still, season two had great games, just like season one, and season two had games like the balance skill with the King of Diamonds, AKA literally messing around and getting acid dumped on you. Scary. Then we had the solitaire confinement with the Jack of Hearts where it was kind of like Among Us. And this was pretty interesting because you really had to trust your potential enemies here. Like, I don't think I'd be able to trust strangers to tell me what my suit is. Friends and family, yeah, sure. But even then, there would still be this slight fear in the back of my mind that I'm being lied to. Like I said, I overthink a lot, so this would have been a huge problem for me here. Another example of a game from Season 2 would have to be the Checkmate with the Queen of Spades. This one was kind of less like a survival game and more like the American Ninja Warrior game because the stakes weren't as high. Like more people were capable of surviving this particular game compared to a good bit of other games. At the end of it all, season one brought certain aspects and season two brought certain aspects. Both seasons had a lot of action in their own right, but I feel like season two outdid season one here, especially with that huge fight with the King of Spades. I honestly didn't expect the King of Spades to hang around as long as he did. 
I feel like he should have been more easier to deal with and battle with because you can literally see him. And even though it was still a game, it wasn't a game where your head or neck could be exploded or a game where you could melt away in seconds from a pot full of acid. He dropped a lot more people than I thought he would have to be honest. And the fact that it took most of the cast to take him down shows just how much I underestimated him. Like this was seriously an amazing fight and it's one of the highlights of season two. So season two takes the action hands down. Season one definitely takes the games because of how it affected our MC and how it really brought him down and almost had him in a level of depression. I've never seen an MC hit that low again in season two. So that is the only reason I would put the games in season one over season two. All in all, it's still a matter of surviving at the end of the day. The last thing I kind of want to end with was how season two concluded. Now the ending to season two was slightly confusing, like especially that last episode or the last two episodes, but it began to make sense. It turns out the reason for the name is in the title and I'm beginning to like stuff like that. Like at first I honestly kept wondering why it was called Alice in Borderland and legit nothing came to mind. But when they explained that this Borderland is kind of like this in-between place where people on the brink of being snuffed out go, I felt kind of dumb and impressed at the same time. At first, I really wasn't sure how these people were going to make it back or if it was even possible for them to come back in the first place. But this ending does two things. It opens the door for a lot of continuous content and more seasons, as well as open the door for new characters to experience this happenstance. Now I can see them getting off with one more season because they did kind of hint towards the Joker card, but I wouldn't want them to drag it out or try to milk it. I think at that point, things kind of starts getting bad. Earlier I said that Alice in Borderland is one of the best survival game shows thus far and I stand by that 100%. Not only is the plot interesting as far as it feeling very isekai like and being transported to a whole nother unfamiliar world, but I really get the feeling and I can see that a lot of thought was put into this show, especially with being able to come up with all of these games in the first place and conveying the severity of the situation everyone was kind of put into. It was also very easy to get into the show and I feel like that speaks volumes. More importantly, it didn't end horribly. That was something I had a concern about, but I'm glad that wasn't the case. In fact, there's even an open door for a season three. If you haven't watched this, I recommend checking it out. If you have watched it, leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought about it. If you had any dislikes, likes. Thank you for tuning in. Sierra Nova is out.